Well, Mikhail Krupinski joins us now, who is the CEO of Bank Pekau. Uh, fantastic to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So you. much to talk about. Do you want to talk about the political backdrop to start off with? I know we're here to talk about banks and, this, and the Polish economy, but, but there's this, been this standoff between the Law and Justice Party uh, and indeed the EU as well. Um, a lot of changes that they've brought in uh, are seen as unconstitutional as well. So do you think the spat between uh, the government in Poland and indeed the EU is going to exacerbate and actually create problems for the Polish economy? Well, first of all, I'm not a politician. I, I, I run a bank. We can but run that caveat we, across the screen. We, so, yes. we are watching carefully. I'm probably not best positioned to answer this question. From what I can say, and you know, giving my many years of experience of working in Poland for American banks and now running the uh, second largest Polish bank, I think uh, lots of our clients, corporates, expect improvements in the judiciary system in the judiciary system mm. it takes a lot of time uh, in terms of proceedings in terms of debt collection to get things done so courts need badly reforming and have not really been transformed after you know 25 years of uh, transition in Poland all right well let's leave that one on the table there as well um, look um, I had the pleasure of going to Warsaw at the height of the financial crisis and one of the reasons why we were in Warsaw is because I was doing a tour around Europe looking at a lot of crisis countries and then I was almost doing a bit of compare and contrast because I was in Hungary, I was in Slovakia, I, I, again all over Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, and I went to Warsaw as well, which famously didn't go into recession during at the height of the crisis as well. So how has Warsaw, how has Poland more broadly used the, the window it got because it wasn't tarred with the same brush as a lot of Central and Eastern Europe to actually build and improve? So first of all, Poland is the biggest economy in, in Central Eastern Europe, right? It is a fully fledged uh, economy pretty diversified exports driven as you know exports was very helpful in times of recession contribution of exports to GDP doubled during the, the crisis secondly Poland has a very stable financial sy system Bank banks are very well capitalized and very profitable uh, you, you were recently showing some charts on on the profitability of, of Western European banks Poland has a much more uh, prof profitable bank and growing there's uh, GDP growth of 4% this year and we believe it will continue, it is sustainable, it will continue at least for the next two to three years which leads to boost in, in, in growth of lending. Um, so when I take a step back and I also worked uh, quite a lot in, in, in Washington in the world, I was with the World Bank and in London and came back to Poland two years ago for well, good. I think the economy has indeed transformed, and there are now there's a lot of chatter around investing in innovative industries. You recently saw J.P. Morgan Chase moving more than 2,000 jobs, and this is not only back offices, but also people who are data scientists. What's the big USP data. that Poland's got? That I mean, everyone wants to have the next big tech hub. London wants it, Brussels wants it, Dublin wants it. We've all got a, a silicon something or other as well. I'm sure there's a silicon something in Poland as well. Why Poland? What's the USP? We have traditionally been very good in maths, science, uh, econometrics. Uh, so we are, as a bank, we are currently uh, talking to a lot of small startups and you would be surprised, people who are, well, fresh out of college, supported by the professors from uh, Polish top schools doing uh, advanced data analytics for silicon based companies. Uh, so I think this the AI data analytics is where Poland is strong. There are a couple of promising companies and we work with them and uh, maybe this could be the, the, the next hub. Um, uh, talking to a, a banker from Poland then who's got a 4% GDP figure on the table for the year as well, um, the ECB needs to get less accommodative, doesn't it? Otherwise we're going to risk some bubbles in Poland, Warsaw and elsewhere, aren't we? Yeah, obviously the central bank policy all, all around the world and particularly in Europe has to be very much driven by, uh, by the ECB. I, I think Polish Monetary Policy Council is slightly easier easier situation than, than actually the ECB, so we expect there will be some hikes but only late uh, next year. Mm. Do you see bubbles being created? I mean, I, I look at bubbles north of Poland, I look at bubbles south of Poland. I, I don't know if there's a Warsaw housing bubble, but I would imagine there probably is. So, so say from the theoretical but also practical perspective, the whole CPA concept, Tayrol Rue have really change. Mm. You and me living in big cities in Europe, we are probably exposed to much bigger inflation than the official um, uh, CPI index, so it sure. makes rate setting very difficult. Yeah. All right, look, Michal, we're going to leave it there, but real pleasure getting an update Thank you on very much. I'm glad to see the Poland's uh, making a, a very good festival as well. Nice to see you, sir. Thank uh, you. Michal Krupinski, who is the CEO of Bank Pekka.